Hello and welcome. So while I'm saving up the money for all the materials for the next prototype of the Powered Armour Dexo Skeleton, I want to be able to make as much improvements as possible. And one thing that's been bugging me in particular is what to do with the forearms. Now in the last prototype, I did try a few different methods and ways of making the forearm armour in particular. I did try to make full wraparound armour, but frankly it just got too bulky, so I decided to ditch the inside armour that goes on the inside of your arm and just have exterior plate armour like this. And then to allow your arm to be secure in it, you've basically got a sleeve that you put in like so, you can tighten it up and that is how the forearm piece secures on. Now, as you can tell with this, this is incredibly rough. So to solve this issue, what I'm doing for the next one is basically 3D printing an hour casing like so, and then laying the ceramic and Kevlar armour on the inside, bonding it all to the 3D print. And then in this case, I've got a 3D printed ring that goes around the edge to keep it all neat. Another piece that was going to be added onto this, which you can see on a previous CAD mock-up, which I'll probably put here if I can, is a fist extension because this leads on to the other issue. And that's how do you protect the hands, particularly when falling over. So if you fall over in the suit, how do you not destroy your hands? And I'm basically going for this type of fist extension where it's a pull-out fist extension that goes out in front of the forearm to protect your hand if you fall over. You can also use it to hold things up, prop things up without actually having to use your hands. However, now I'm putting more of this on YouTube, while function is number one, I do want to try and make everything look as interesting as possible. So we're gonna be try to increase the looks and aesthetic as well as increase the actual functionality of this design. With that said, onto Fusion 360. Starting off with the current 3D printed version, I want to increase the curve and basically narrow it up so it can sit tighter on your arm. While I have actually narrowed this up a little bit compared to the previous prototype, I have realised I can do it even further. So I'm going to pull it in about 10 millimetres either side, just to make it that bit narrower and nicer fit while still being able to rotate your wrist. I'm also going to put in a flat surface to aid in fixing the fist extension onto. The reason the previous design had this outer ring that attached to the face plate was basically to aid in manufacturing. So because most of the ceramic is out of small hexagonal tiles, it can be difficult if it's a complicated part to get a neat edge around the sides of it. So the idea of the ring is you could basically have the ceramic tiles and the Kevlar go over the edge of the part and then you could just run around it with a cutting tool, a grinder, whatever, make it all neat and then bond on the outer ring. However, due to how small this piece is and the fact that it doesn't have to attach onto the face of another piece, I don't think it matters if the ceramic is cut to a perfect line at the edge of this 3D printed moulding especially with the curve that it's now got on. So I'm just gonna put a regular shell on this and have it as one piece. Now that's done with the bolt hole pattern fitted in, we'll get onto the fist extension. With the bolt hole pattern copied, I've countersinked the bolt holes and also put a slot down the middle, which will both act as one of the runners and the main securing point for the actual fist extension itself. And then we've just got the underneath matched to the curve of the forearm. And then as for the locking mechanism, which will hold the fist out, it's just going to be like a simple push button piece that slides in. Instead of using some form of little spring, I'm going to use two little magnets that will both hold it nicely tight in place, while also acting as a spring, helping to bring it back to centre. With the fist extension added, you can see how you press the top bit down as a button, and how the notch fits in at the bottom. And when the thing's pressed down, the notch moves out of the way, and the fist can slide back and forth. As for the fist extension, it sits in the runners down the sides, while also having a bolt hole for the slot bolt to fit into, which is what secures it down in place in the runners. You can then see how it slides back nicely. And if we zoom in, you can see the pattern of the knuckles. I have just tried to kind of replicate regular human knuckles with this. The main reason for this is grip. So if it was just a smooth edge, if you tried to push on anything, you'd kind of just slip off it. So you do need some kind of jagged pattern to allow them to dig in and grip. So what's going to feel more natural than a knuckle shape. And I've just kind of kept it angular because I think, frankly, it looks better, especially when it matches up with the back cover. And then to keep the two halves together, we've just got two small little magnets that slot into the side, hold it together, but also allow you to pull the fist extension out pretty easily without any form of button. Something that will be to learn with all this is how big and strong all of these magnets need to be. I'm going for pretty small ones at the minute because it doesn't really matter for this prototype, but in the future, I imagine they'll have to be stronger. Also, I've designed this in mind that in the future I can make a negative 3D print it and then I'll have a mould where I can then mould either, say, forged carbon fibre or regular carbon fibre into it to make the final part. Although I have tried to make it in mind that the main flat piece of the extension 
and the bed that sits on could just be a single piece of actual carbon fiber could be a piece of flat sheet carbon fiber with the whole cnc'd in that might be the stronger alternative for those pieces instead of just being part of the regular moldings now if we add the forearm you can see how well it fits it's pretty much the right length it's also nice and snug around the curve of the forearm i think those straight lines add to it as well and you'll also notice i've added some details to the forearm itself including these hashed diagonal lines underneath which should also add to grip if you have your arms resting on something as well as adding some detail to make it look better i've also put my exodynamics logo on the top side of it as well all of which should make this a far better and more interesting design than the previous 3d printed one shown earlier and before i forget i will just put in one of the exoskeleton brackets into place so you can see where the actuator will mount on the outside as well now that's all done i'll get all of the pieces 3d printed and ready for assembly and there we have it the fist extension is printed so we've got the top piece here you can see how that piece could be replaced by a sheet of carbon fiber in the future it came out pretty good even if i'm about the laziest sander in the world the base part came out pretty well with the countersink bolt holes and the slot underneath although this small piece around the locking mechanism did break off almost immediately but that shouldn't really matter so we'll get the magnets glued in place and we'll get it all bolted together and the magnets are now fitted so we've got that one in the base then one in the side for the extension as well as the opposing one in the fist and lastly the opposing one for the locking mechanism now it's fitted together you can see it at full length i did have to sand it all up a little bit more just to get it all to run smoother as for the springiness of the locking mechanism you can see it does actually have some spring in it but the magnets will need to be way bigger for any future prototypes and with it sliding nicely in, we'll get the back cover mounted on. As that's now looking nice and neat, I thought I'd cut out the actuator mounting bracket. In future, of course, this will be made out of carbon fiber, but I just thought I'd make it out of plastic for now, as it is just to represent what the actuator will look like on the arm itself. Next up is to mount these to the forearm and see what it all looks like. And here lies the great delay in this video for this week. It turns out I just want to have a good 3D printing week. It failed to print once, it failed to print twice, it failed to print three times, and then I thought on the fourth time I had it. Until it turned out the new reel of filament that I put on had an overlapping strand in it, and it got caught and then stopped. So with that reel aggressively removed, I finally went forward and went for the fifth attempt. Thank the actual f for that. Fifth attempt, five days, and it's finally done it. Now all I've got to do is separate the mountain of glue gun off of the bottom of this that I had to use to get this to secure to the bed. Why has it been such a pig, may you ask? I have absolutely no idea. The fist extension worked fine. It's just had a bad week. And I've never wanted to smash a machine up more. But at least it did come out all right in the end. The diagonal lines added a nice detail. There's a nice flat surface on top, and the logo came out pretty good as well. In the future, I'll be bonding nut inserts into all of these holes, like I did on the previous prototype, but for now, I'm just going to be using them as nuts so I can get the fist extender mounted on. And there it is, all neatly fitted together. Oh, and while I remember, in case you're wondering about potential warping of the PLA, once the armour is bonded into the inside, there'll be no chance of it warping or moving. And I'll also be coating over the top of it, whether that is in epoxy or some kind of marine paint, so UV rays won't be an issue either. And now it's on, you can see how neatly it all folds up. Although I'm pretty lucky I didn't put my logo any further down or it would have covered it. Just got away with that. Now, just to see what it looks like, I'm going to bolt on the prototype actuator onto the plastic bracket and then tack it onto the forearm. While I haven't yet completely developed these actuators fully yet, I am confident that the face of the actuator is going to look like this and be this size. That's because if I try to make any of the internal components smaller in that regard, I either can't buy the components that I need, like magnets, in the right sizes I need, or the laser cut steel gears get too small to the point where the laser warps the gear teeth, hence why I'm confident they're going to be the size they are now. Although I am pretty sure I'll be able to get them narrower in the future. The last point to note as I struggle to open this with one hand while holding the camera in the other, is that once all of this is heavier and made out of carbon fibre, you'll obviously have to pull it a lot harder than I can pull it now and it'll have stronger magnets in so the lock will just lock in automatically but at the minute it's all just a bit too lightweight to aggressively pull it and there we have it a new and improved forearm design certainly much improved on the old basic 3d print 
I'm going to be going over other pieces of the Mark V prototype and try to improve them wherever I can. But I do have a question for you viewers, and that is, I want to keep adding some interesting looking details to the surface of the suit onto this 3D print. Like what I'm doing with my logo, of course I can't put my logo everywhere, it'll look ridiculous. So what iconography can I kind of put over the top of this, do you think? Now I'm not trying to make Warhammer Space Marine armour here, but one thing they did well on that is they found all of this different iconography to add as details onto the models, either as miniatures or for the video game. So what type of thing can I add to the surface of this to make it more interesting? The next piece I'll be doing is the upper arm part. I've realised now I've got the shape of the actuator pretty much nailed down. There is modifications required for that before I start getting expensive Kevlar and carbon fibre involved. And while editing, I realised I didn't give a reason for this design in particular over, for example, a rotating gauntlet that rotates with your hand instead of just having something stationary on the side of your arm. And the reason for that is while you could make something that rotates with your hand, I don't see a possible way of doing it where it doesn't break. If you think about how small the little components will have to be to create a slide that basically allows your hand to rotate in the gauntlet while also moving open and shut, the size of those components are going to be incredibly small and it doesn't matter if you make them out of a high tensile steel or not, they're no doubt going to break or worse, in my opinion, just bend because if they bend it'll jam and then you'll basically have a hand that's stuck in a position that you can't get it out of. Another issue with that is if that fist cover essentially fits really tight to the wrist and hand, then it means you won't be able to have different types of gloves underneath. So you'll only be able to have a summer glove or a winter glove. You won't be able to fit either or depending on what day or temperature it is. It'll also make the gloves hard to replace as well as remove with the suit on. Which for anyone who works in any type of industry, you'll know gloves don't last two minutes and you're going to have to replace them quite regularly. So you don't really want them integral part of the suit itself. But yeah, I just wanted to get that in before the end of the video. So please feel free to leave your comments down below. Please like and subscribe to help the channel grow. I have a Patreon below with some designs on in case you're interested. And I hope to see you in the next video.